Hi, Scorpio. This is your May astrology for all Scorpio signs. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I always throw out there, if you are a sun or a rising sign, then this is more of into your core, exactly, and a little bit more into the actual houses. But if you're a Venus or a moon, then I'm getting more into your sensitivities and your emotional depths. However, you have a full moon in the beginning of the month in your sign. So it's kind of going to be in the, your emotions or your sensitivities anyway. Because unless you're a moon Scorpio, this could be bringing up more attention to you right in your very core. Now for the month, it's looking like most of the energies... When I look at the chart, it looks like most of the energies are about your outer community, your social world. But when I'm starting to gather the information from spirit and start to talk to you, I'm getting more of responsibilities within the communication into that social world. And how that brings things home on a deeper basis to you. Because what the Spirit's given me is like, uh, like family land, family possessions, family responsibilities, um, details, paying attention to the details over and over again within the communication to the community. The authority, the responsibilities. The joint efforts, joint resources, reputation. And are you shape-shifting and putting the investments into what is truly building security? Is there anything else? For some of you, this is also going to take place over phone calls. But this all has to do with coming back to realizing who the real self is. The real depths here. Versus your routines. Your daily, I want to say daily commitments. Daily investments. I feel like it's Seeing the bigger picture, but by looking at the smaller, very up close and personal, is what I'm really getting a lot of. A lot of judgment versus grief, sorrow, shame, and blame. And what I feel like I'm getting out of that is the judgment's coming from the communication. And if the communication is truly valid or value, valuable, and if you're holding on to ill decisions caused by grief, sorrow, shame, blame, insecurities. And that makes sense because your 12th house, most astrologers are not going to be talking about this, but your 12th house is definitely talking to you this month. Let me get into all of my notes here and then we'll get into everything else but before i do if you've been following me for a while or or not um i'm starting to first come out with my very first spiritual health care line and so if you're interested in it it's going to be the first parts are going to be essential oils eventually i'm going to bring out several different lines i'm in the process of working on them and getting legal so that it's all taken care of in the right way but um i'm starting out with the essential oils of the very first line which is all about astrology that's why i'm bringing it up while i'm doing the video and the way i see astrology versus how it brings healing into your life and i've been working with spirit to cr create each one of these planets as oils and then some of them eventually are going to come out as baths or mists there's several lines i'm working on but if you are interested just keep an eye on my social media or 
just go to my website, ladystarsandfire.com, and you'll be able to see when they do start to come out. As well as if you're interested in your own, you know, private appointments, which are more in tune directly to you, you can always book one of those appointments at the website. With that being said, first thing out when I look at the astrology is from the 10th through the 17th. This may be an incredibly sensitive week. And that's because you have so many planets that are turning from direct to retrograde during that week. So everything's going to kind of be like up in the air, plain and simple. But from the 11th, sorry, from the 7th through to the 11th, you have Mars and Cirrus starting to conjunct. As a sensitive, Scorpios, you know you're the sensitives too. Um, because you feel everything to its heightened position, whether it's good or bad. From the 7th through the 11th, Mars and Cirrus start to conjunct as they move out of Aquarius and into Pisces. Now, that's when you'll start feeling it. But it'll be at its heightened level when, because it's going to be conjuncting all month. But it's going to be within one degree of each other from the 20th through the 27th. Now, I'll get back to looking at where that is for you in just a minute. <laughs> Your 12th house is Chiron. <clears throat> Aries with Chiron. Is it? No, it's not. What am I saying? Let me pull this up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's because I had you backwards. But your 12th house is definitely talking Aries and Chiron. Chiron and Aries is speaking with Libra, which Libra is your 12th house. I just had you flipped over. And those are in opposition all month long. Now, I'll get into that in just a moment. I'm just making sure I'm throwing some of that basic, important information out at you. Because your first thing is you have the full moon <coughs> on the 7th. The full moon is on the 7th in Scorpio. Now, Scorpio energy is... You feel everything to its heightened sensitivity, especially when it's got the moon here. So if you're a sun Scorpio, this may be harder for you because the moon is facing off on top of you. Especially in your awareness, your appearance, your character, your personality, your view of life. The actual awareness of you and your life and your core is being reflected back to you. Full moons are all about release, surrender, and let go. So there's something here that's in some form or another bringing attention to your awareness. Spirit is saying for many of you that's your self-esteem. But I always put self-esteem, self-worth, and self-value in the idea of truly, what do you value about yourself and your life? And usually we find that by overcoming insecurities about ourselves, which is shape-shifting energy coming into liberation. Full moon is going to bring this up to your attention again on the 7th. And it can be either, if you're in a good place, the full moon in Scorpio can bring very seductive, loving, compassionate sexuality, sense, you know, just feeling good. But if you're at all in a negative place or uncomfortable, then I like to call Scorpio like a sexy Sherlock Holmes. Like, you're the detective of detectives, but yet you're kind of like, all about sex and change and transformation. So you at the same time can rip yourself apart. Okay. And this is telling you, you know, you may be getting some deep valid information about yourself in mirroring conversations. Like the world may be showing you a mirror of something that's in, you have insecurities over about yourself, about your appearance, about your self-esteem, about your value about where you're not fully feeling liberated, where you're not investing in yourself, 
The full moon may be bringing up insecurities and very sensitive energies about that. But remember, it's about helping you get on the right cycle to help you move forward. So identifying that is only a positive thing, even though at the time it may not feel positive. The uh, spirit is bringing up to my attention. Do not forget. Okay, I'm just going to run down the list. Do not forget. Okay. What spirit is bringing to my attention is Saturn is going retrograde on the 11th. And that's a Monday. In Aquarius. However, eight day, like seven days later, Pallas, which is also in Aquarius, is going to go retrograde. This is going to, they're both in Aquarius, is going to be bringing in lessons. For you to learn before they move back into Capricorn. Mercury is going to enter Gemini also on the 11th. Venus is going to go retrograde on the 13th. While Mars enters Pisces on the 13th. And Jupiter will also go retrograde on the 14th. You have the new moon in Gemini on the 22nd. Mercury enters Cancer on the 28th. And the only thing that's coming out of retrograde is Juno, which happens to be in Libra, which is your 12th house. <clears throat> now, I'm going to back up and go over the stuff that I'm seeing. First off, let's get this turned the right way. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Your 6th house and your 12th house are going to be talking all month long. And they're in opposition. So right from the beginning, this is a challenging aspect. Your 12th house has Juno in it. And up until the 27th, it's still in retrograde. Which means it's only talking to you. The sacrifice and commitment it takes to bringing the healing forward from your subconscious. <coughs> it also has make, make, and, and Halmea here. So the very collective consciousness and the growth of the lotus flower, whether you feel like you're living in the swamp of shit or you've come through the swamp of shit and now you're starting to clean up, bloom, reach for the sky. This is all taking place in your 12th house, your subconscious energies. For some of you, this is going to be government situations that are coming forward, whether it's stuff with Corona and being stuck at home or actual stuff like with courts, um, with court, with jail, with, uh, government official offices, government officials, um, of some form, some of you, it is definitely dealing with that. For some of you, you're dealing, I'm sorry to say it, but that's what Spirit is saying. For some of you, it is suicide situations. Because suicide does come in the 12th house. So maybe really getting in your grief, your sorrow, your shame, your secrets. Maybe dealing with someone who you know who did commit suicide. Because I'm being given funerals too. But this is, it could also be letting your dead be dead. It could be the self-deception, self-undoing. Like I said, the 12th house is tricky. It's grief, sorrow, shame, blame, insecurities that we like to keep in denial from us. But the subconscious is making it conscious because you have the collective consciousness in the 12th house. You also have, like I said, Juno, which is in retrograde in the 12th house. Which is sacrifice and commitment to the healing. That's only talking to you. Are you taking the time to be responsible to you? Are you taking the time to nurture you? Are you in denial and you're neglecting you? And a lot of these true, deep-seated insecurities that we like to brush under the closet, the skeletons in the closet, this is bringing them out and playing with them and learning why they messed up, okay? Directly across from that is your routines. 
Your 12th house also is Libra, which is all about harmony and balance and justice. Problem with Libra is usually the Libra doesn't get the harmony and justice and balance because they're so busy trying to give harmony and justice and balance to everybody else. So this is asking you to step into the power of truly coming into understanding the Libra and harness the justice of the scales. You are the scale. But you are also one of the scales. You're not more important. You're not less important. This is saying don't put yourself on the back burner for everybody else. You're just as important as anybody else. And you need your healing too. Sorry, this is coming in from them. And then, like I said, that energy is going directly across into your routines. Your everyday routines. Your daily work. Your service. Your diet. Your health care. Your hygiene. But it's also your careers. It's also your daily jobs. It's your daily mundane tasks. And absolutely nothing about the mundane is mundane. The daily routines is the people, places, and things of energies that you consume. So are these people, places, and things of energies that you consume healthy? Because your 12th house directly across from it is saying it's not. Is saying there's something there within these routines or someone or some place, <coughs> people, places, and things of energies that you consume. It's Aries energy is a brand new cycle, a brand new beginning. Chiron is all about the wounded healer trying to correct the wounds, trying to correct the wounds of the routines. Some people, I say this all the time, some people, and, and to each their own, some people go jogging on a daily basis. Some people are all about their diet on a daily basis. Some people spend their day at the bar. There's nothing wrong with having a few drinks. There's nothing wrong with having a little bit of partying. There's a difference when the routine starts to be your life instead of it being a routine. When the routine takes over control of you, people, places, and things. That's when it starts to enter that 12th house of the secrets that we hide under the closet or under the rug, our skeletons in the closet, death, decay, destruction. Wow, that was them. So this is saying in these routines, and some of you, I said already, it's going to be government. Some of this is uh, suicide Putting yourself in a, a routine that is unhealthy for you and realizing the routines that need to shift, whether it's a person, a place, or a thing. Your routines are all what consume your life because it's the easiest part to accidentally seep its energy in. From the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, you get up, you take a shower, you eat something to eat, you get something to eat, you go to work. You know, after work, you, go, you do this, you do that. It becomes daily mundane, but the mundane is what's the most important magic. So if the people, places, and things of energy are not healthy routines, the 12th house is going to suck it up and cause more problems. That's basically what I got for you. It's trying to teach you how to shift this because those routines also have iris in it which is an Aries energy, trouble, toil, strife, and injustice. So if you're allowing your pride to make the decision, then you're actually listening to ego. This is about listening to soul, not ego. All right. We're going to bounce back to Mars and Cirrus because like I said, from 7th through the 11th, you are going to start to feel Mars and Cirrus come into conjunction. Yet, on the 20th through the 27th, is going to be at its highest point, its most sensitive. Now, that's your fifth house. All right, so that kind of supports what I was just saying. It's funny how spirit sends me in direction. Because those routines aren't just routines. The fifth house speaks to you about having the creative outlet, the creative expression, and allowing it to come up and out of you. It's also your inner child, but it's where <coughs> your hobbies are, your personal interests, your creative expression, dating, romance, sex, 
If you're a musician, this would be all about where you're putting the time into being the musician. This is your pursuit of pleasure. What makes you tick? What makes you happy and enjoy being part of life? Are you getting the time for that? Are those routines allowing you to have the time for that? Those people, places, and things, and routines. Are they allowing you to be the creative expression that you are? Are they allowing you to be able to enjoy that? Cirrus, which is threefold theory, karma, and whether you're nurturing or neglecting those very things that make you tick and enjoy life is coming in on top of Mars. Like I said, your inner child, your inner play, your inner fun zone. And Mars is getting fucking fed up of not being able to do what it is that is the best expression of you. Mars is your passion, action, aggression, your fire. So are you putting your fire into these hobbies? Into these, it could be a love relationship, it could be a sexual relationship, but it could just as much be, you know, if you're a musician taking the time to play, if you're a writer taking the time to <coughs> invest in writing. Your creative expression, your creative outlet. You having the time to put in the time for what you desire. Are your routines keeping you from getting to that? Mars is asking you to sink your teeth into that fire of yourself. And Cirrus is saying, if you don't, then you'll be neglecting yourself. And I'm going to bring you the threefold karma of the fact that you are. So she's pushing you and Mars into your confidence and believing in your creative expression and taking the time for you. But if you're not taking the time for you, especially through the 20th through the 27th, she's going to smack you with that karma and tell you where you're screwing up. Hey, man, I just give you what I'm being told. Now. Well, let's just go backwards again, because the next thing Spirit was bringing up is Aquarius, and that's the Saturn energy, and thank you, and the palace energy. And for you, this is one, two, three, your fourth house. So they're more or less just bringing you home, <laughs> is the way this sounds. Your fourth house is your inner emotional security. It is the home the vessel it is the home but it is the home it speaks to you of your inner child again as a smaller child it speaks to where either the inner emotional security was being taught correctly or where it was not taught correctly it is the home and is the land is the personal foundation that creates or did not create healthy inner emotional security it is the true roots of who you are, why you are the way you are, and the true real self. This is where the karmic lessons and the reincarnation take its shift. <laughs> I've been saying this a lot this time. This is your three-dimensional home, your three-dimensional security. But this is only as secure as this is. If this isn't secure, then this is still not complete. This is still shady. So this has to be truly the roots of this, getting right with the illnesses inside and filling in the cracks and making secure foundation of who and what you are so that this is always secure. You have Saturn here. And up until the 11th, Saturn is in shadow in your fourth house, which is talking about where it's touchy-feely and this is questioning this. And the rest of the world is questioning this. Showing you some of those darker aspects until the 11th when it goes retrograde. Now, Saturn in Aquarius normally is all about rules, walls, and boundaries. But in Aquarius, it seems to be, to me, like... 
instead of being all like, no, I don't like that. I'm going to put a restriction up. And Aquarius is kind of like, let me try some new shit. And this means that it's investing in itself, pushing things around. If you're doing it right, if you're listening, it's pushing things around so that this is secure so that all that live with you, all that is part of your home will then become truly, honestly secure, but rules, walls, and boundaries need to be shifted so that this is actually liberated. This is actually in its value because if you don't find yourself valuable, then this isn't going to be valuable either. This is getting to the true inner emotional security and what it takes to tap into it, to make it safe and secure by noticing and reevaluating yourself, recalibrating yourself, retaking inventory of yourself and giving yourself back the power that you've accidentally given away. Athena, the warrior goddess, which is palace wisdom is coming in and she's showing you where you're lacking the wisdom up until she goes retrograde on the 18th but after the 18th she turns inward to you and becomes your ally and at that point she is strengthening saturn on this journey of strengthening who you are before it moves back into your third house because in retrograde, they're both going to go back into your third house. But right now, they're talking from the depths of your inner emotional security. They will both be moving into your third house where you have Pluto, which is already in retrograde. And you have Jupiter, which as of the 14th will be in retrograde. Your communication right now is Pluto is the only planet that does not turn inward. Pluto is always inward. When Pluto is in retrograde, Pluto just starts whipping your ass. Jupiter is not in that most powerful, strongest position in Capricorn. But for you, this is your third house. This is your communication zone. So your fact of coming into your inner flame and your inner communication with yourself is in somewhat of a question. And that's because it's making you actually dig deeper than probably you want to. <coughs> it's making you truly <laughs> Spirit just said it's making you truly Go back to where it is you came from because that's where you are returning to. So they're making you see all the way back to all of these things that's created the human that you are now and how and what pieces of you don't serve you, especially within your communication because your communication with yourself is what's going to build that self-worth, self-value, self-esteem, create the proper routines, create the proper inner emotional security, create the proper communication, but you're learning where that communication is faulty. That's them, not me. You are learning where, I don't even want to say that it's, because Pluto is fear of finding the true self. Death, decay, and destruction for renewal, rebirth, regeneration. It's the flame and the fire and the change. In retrograde, it's the communication of truly seeing the details, the bigger picture. But it feels like this is, this is all about communicating outwardly to the relationships, but you can't have a good, healthy relationship and have good communication until you completely get right with the inner self. And this sounds like this is going, this is where you're tweaking the inner self and its communication so that you can be very clear with the outer communication. Jupiter is bringing abundance in. And he's been doing it from shadow, so most likely it's from a negative aspect. Because people always like to say Jupiter is abundant, higher knowledge, 
and lucky but i don't see jupiter that way jupiter is whatever you feed jupiter and with him in shadow he's a darker aspect i don't care and he's in a fall position so he's coming in showing you where it's not completely comfortable now what we have left out is 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 oh, i'm gonna run out of time come back for part two and what we're gonna be talking about is part of those outer relationships seventh eighth and ninth house your higher self and the eighth seventh eighth and ninth house more or less and you've got a lot of energies going on still i love you guys come back for part two